Hey, I'm Lisa Ingram and I'm a ceramic artist and I love to make videos for kids for projects you can do at home on your own without any special equipment. Today we are going to make polymer clay tooth fairies. So like you see in front of me, we are going to make these precious fairies that you can put your teeth in whenever you lose them. So they have this little basket and this one even has a little toothbrush in her basket. And then the tooth fairy knows exactly where to find your tooth when she comes to visit. So grab several colors of polymer clay, a toothpick, and something to cut your polymer clay with that is not sharp. And we will get started. Okay, now that we have our tools and our supplies ready, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to work on is the dress for the tooth fairy. So if you look at my sample here, there are lots of different parts and we will start with the dress. So you just need to pick a color that you would like to use on the dress and really the size depends on how big you want your tooth fairy to be. They can be so many different sizes. So you can see this one is very petite. This one is a little bit bigger. This one is even bigger. So how much clay you use will determine how big yours turns out to be. So I'm gonna use about this much so it fits inside of my hand. And polymer clay, sometimes it'll feel a little bit hard when you first get it out of the wrapper. So just rolling it in your hands will help to loosen it up, warm it up so that it'll be a lot more flexible. And then when, once you have it into a round ball like this, you can start to turn it into sort of this conical teepee shape. So I'm just pinching the top a little bit, really gently, so not a hard pinch. If I do a hard pinch, it'll get pointy like that, but just gentle pinches all the way around so that we have this conical tapered shape. So it'll be thinner up here and thicker down here. This polymer clay is super pretty. It has some sparkles in it and this purple color just looks really magical and fun to me, just like the Tooth Fairy. And I just love it. There's so many different colors you can use and they all will give your fairy a different personality. So once you get it in this kind of ice cream cone shape, you can tap the bottom on the table so we'll have a flat place to sit and then do any last little adjustments that you like. Then I also like to tap the top so it's not too pointy because that's gonna be her neck and where the head sits. So we do need to have it not come to a point. And then if you want to just squeeze the base out some more to flare her dress, you can do that. And that makes the body. And everything else that we do attaches to this. All right, so there is her body. I'm gonna set that right there. And next you'll need a color for her head. So I have this really fun sparkle white. I do the head in all kinds of colors and really it just depends on what you have and what you want yours to look like. So we'll use just a little bit less polymer clay for the head than we did the dress. So this is what I'm gonna start with. Again, it does fit in the palm of my hand. And if it's too much, I can always take it away. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll. And just remember, if I go too fast, you can always pause the video and take your time and catch up and come back. So don't feel like you have to speed up, take your time. That's the nice thing about videos is you can go at your own pace. So I'm thinking, this head is just a little bit on the large side. So all I have to do is squeeze some off and then roll again. And I can see that some of the pink was left on my hands from her dress. So I'm just gonna mix that in 
and roll again. Sometimes the colors do that, so you may just want to rinse your hands in between colors if you use a really dark color and switch to a light one. But lucky for me, just a little pink in this is not really a problem. So, this is what the head is gonna look like, right? So we can just go ahead, squeeze it on there, and now we've got a dress with a head. So I'll put her right here. And next, we'll do some arms. So she's gonna have some little arms on either side. And we're gonna make them a little bit long because they have to hold her basket, right? So this clay that I pinched off when she had too much in her head, I'll go ahead, put it in between my hands and roll back and forth. So if you've ever made a snake with Play-Doh, um, we also call it a coil in ceramics. That's what you want to do. So we're gonna make one long arm, okay? You can roll it on your table. And of course, you don't wanna work on the carpet or anything dirty. You wanna work on a flat, clean, non-stick surface. And usually polymer clay is really easy to clean up, but we don't want it to fall on the floor and get in the carpet or anything. Luckily, I have a whole pottery studio that I can work in and it won't get in my house, but my kids do play in the house with this and it really hasn't caused that much of a mess. So this is a really long arm and I'm just gonna tap it down in the middle to flatten it out. Again, let's release it from the table so it doesn't stick. If it tears a little bit, that's okay. You can lay it on top of each other and put it back together. And then what we're gonna do, is that flat spot is going to lay on her back really close to her head. We don't want the arms too low. And then we're gonna wrap them around a little bit. And you're gonna look and see, like how long are these? These are definitely too long. So I'm just gonna trim some off and then they're just gonna lay hanging for a little bit because I haven't made the basket yet. So they're just going to stay right here for now and then we'll go ahead and make her basket. So I'm gonna lay this down. Yeah, you can still see that. Okay, so I'll lay her down and then I think you'll really like this part. So for the basket, I'm gonna use two colors. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my gold and a little bit of my brown. So you can go ahead and get whatever color or colors you want for your basket. And this is really gonna be a small amount. So maybe just a little more than you used for the arms. You can always, you know, Take some away if we get too much. So what we're gonna do, I feel like you can't see her very well. I'll just set her up for now. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to make two coils with this. Okay, so there is a ball. I'm gonna roll my hands back and forth. Then I can even roll it on the table. Don't want a bumper. Gotta be careful with what you have already made. And then I'll do the same thing with my other color. Oops. That one landed on the floor for a minute. If they do that, since I'm outside, got kind of yucky. I'm just gonna pull off the dirt it picked up and then keep going. So then I'll have two long coils. And since I have my nice cutting tool, I can cut those down so they're about the same size. And now to swirl it together, I'm just gonna take one end, hold the other end and twist, okay? So it's gonna look kinda like candy. And then I'm just gonna roll it into a ball and roll it around in my hands together. And that's 
starts to make the clay mix together. So two colors swirled up and then we can re-roll that coil and you'll have a basket that looks swirled. Kind of like that one, right? <laughs> Isn't she so cute? She is just darling, isn't she? Um, my oldest daughter made that one. She's the one that came up with this project. She's really creative and such an inspiration to me. So now, isn't that a fun coil? So we can take this, spin it, make it even more swirly. If you have some thick parts, you can roll it again. Really, this is way more clay than I'm going to need. So I'm gonna cut off the end. Sometimes that extra clay just gets in the way. Roll a little bit more. And then you can spin it as much as you like just to make those little swirlies show up. <laughs> and then I'm going to just tuck the end, start to roll it like a snail. So this is gonna start flat and then I'll just start coming up, and stacking it on top of the lower coil a little and then I'll keep on going around until I get a good size basket so I think this is just about the perfect size to hold a tooth right and it's about the right size for her too so then I can take my knife trim it down and just tap that together Gotta be careful here. If you tap too hard, it'll change the shape of your basket and can crush it. But if you don't push hard enough, it's not gonna stick together. But I think we did it. So now her basket's ready. And what I like to do for her hands is just give it a little squeeze on the end so that the hands have a little bit more shape to them. Soften up that edge where I did give it a little cut. So it just looks a little more natural. And then I'll hand her her basket, squeeze her little hands around it. And now she's ready for a tooth, right? Pretty cool. Okay, set her back over here. I think next we need some wings. So what color are you gonna do for your wings? <laughs> I'm thinking teal for mine, but I also think a lot of colors would be pretty, but let's go with the teal. Let's make this a little more colorful. All right. So I need two circles. You can do two circles, you can do four. So like this one, she's got four circles that we flattened, plus a fifth one in the middle to make her wings. This one has four circles that we sort of turn into ovals. And this one has two. So there's a lot of ways that you can do this. You can get creative on your own and decide exactly what you want yours to look like. So I'm gonna make it with two. Let's see how that looks. So there's one. There's two, and then what you're gonna do is you can take your finger, press, press. If your table's really sticky, you may just wanna press it on your hand, okay? Then I'm gonna lengthen it, and I'm gonna take my toothpick, just press it in a little bit, okay? You can shape it how you like it. That's gonna be one wing, right? If you find out they're too big, then you'll just have to cut some of the clay off or squeeze it off, take it away. The nice thing about clay is you can always adjust it. If you didn't do it wrong, you can just make a little change and get it how you want it if it's not how you want it the first time. It's 
hard to get things right the first time. Okay. So then, you can try them on in the back and see if they fit, right? All right. So I think these fit pretty good. Let's so press it in there. Give it some good little presses. And then, draw these little lines on the back just to give it some decoration right it's pretty cute I can even take it make some little dots if I want to decorate her wings since she's so magical so fancy already she really needs some hair but isn't that cute so I think one last thing I'm just gonna set her like this don't fall over I think she just needs a little button in the back let's give her a pink button so I'm gonna roll circle might just be a bit too big flatten it on my hand and then I'm just gonna put it right in the middle that'll just help seal everything together and then take the less pointy side of my toothpick push it down and I'll put a few more circles around it if you want to make it look like um, a flower you can just kind of push in on the sides to give it some petals there's all kinds of ways you can give the wings lots of fancy details, but that's one way to do it, right? Okay, so now she has her wings, her dress, her basket, her arms, her head. So we've done so much and now we need some hair, okay? So the hair is really fun and pretty important, right? So let me show you some of these samples. Set our little angel right there now look at this one this one has some wild hair right this is green she did some coils she swirled them together and it's just gorgeous right so there's one example this one has really cute curls doesn't she so she did coils and curled them and gave her such this cute little curly bob of a hairdo and then this one it's just more of a simple hairdo with some hair just squeezed and flattened to drape over her head and here's another ponytail girl you gotta see her so look she just has um, a rounded piece folded around her head and then a long ponytail so there's a few ideas. You can do so many different things with the hair. And I think I'm going to start with this gold for the hair. So I am going to just squeeze some of this. You know I like to roll it in a ball. The reason why I like to roll it in a ball is it just makes it round and smooth on all of the edges, right? And then I'm going to kind of make it like a hat, okay? So I'm just gonna start to squeeze it around my thumb so that it's not exactly flat, it's curved because her head is curved and we want it to fit on her head, okay? So I'm gonna keep going. Our hair really wraps around a lot of our head, especially us girls. So we want her to have plenty of hair. Okay. So this is starting to work. I'm gonna bring it forward some more. I'm just squeezing, pulling. So she's got some hair coming all around. She's beautiful, she's fancy. She is just a lovely tooth fairy, right? And I accidentally knocked her head off. So I'm gonna accidentally mush it back on, not really accidentally, um, on purpose, put it back on. 
tap her on the head a little bit, but not hard enough to hurt her. And that is starting to look really cute, I think. So I'll set her back down and being really gentle with her. And let's give her, mm, I like to give mine a bun, I'm kind of like a bun artist, I suppose. It is my preference. So again, <laughs> we're gonna roll that in our hands little bit. This is probably just a bit more than I want. So I'm going to just trim that one end that was really skinny. Don't like that. And then I'll start to curl it up. So I have a swirl. Then I can just set it on top of her head and looky there. Now she has such a cute little bun, right? And her hair just kind of drapes over those wings. She doesn't have any bald spots. She's all covered. She really is starting to look like a lady. So we need to give her eyes now, right? Okay, put her right here. So, eyes. This one has got some brown eyes. This one has several color eyes. This one has white eyes with just some tiny black specks. So there's so many ways that you can do this. Since the background of mine is already white, I'm going to start with my color. So I will start with some blue. I'm gonna come over here and grab some of this light blue. You can pick whatever color you want to start with. You can do white as your base. I'm going to do blue as my base and just take a small bit off. Make sure your knife is clean so you're not getting anything mixed in like I did. And we're going to make two small circles. And so I like to just roll it in my hand with one finger, press, that's still pretty good size. I'm going to try to see if I can go a little smaller. This part can be hard, so if you need help, you can always ask someone in your house, a big sister, a parent, babysitter, brother, anybody that likes art is usually happy to help. Let's see if those, how those look. Sometimes these little ones, I just like to pick them up with the toothpick. And that one got a little bit less than round. I'm gonna lay her down. Just laying her down really gently so I don't knock her head off or anything. Gotta reshape that real quick. Then lay it on her face. It wants to stick to you, don't let it. There's one. And we're just setting these on gently because we might need to move them around to make it look right, you know? Ah! Okay. So right now, one eye just looks a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna take it off. a bit with my fingernail then go again there we go okay yay those look about about right and then I have this dark brown over here that's what I'm gonna do in the very middle so this is just such a tiny little speck it really makes a difference but little is good You like it bigger that is totally fine but we just want some of that um, pretty blue to still show so there are her eyes right 
and now she just needs a smile, I think. So I'm gonna leave her laying down like this. I'll support her with my knife. And then I'm gonna go back to this pink, right? And I'm gonna make a smile, right? So just a little bit, just a little bit. And she just really needs a super cute smile. Trim it down, you gotta get the right size. Sometimes you don't know, but you can get it close. And then when you try it on, you can decide if you need to take more or make a bigger one. Okay, so I'm just softening those ends. All right, here we go. Curve it like a smile. Try it on. And what do we think? Maybe just a little too big. Just take it off a tiny bit from the side. It's trying to stick to all to my fingers. Okay, I'm gonna use my toothpick so it doesn't stick so much. And then roll the toothpick away. And there, now she has a good smile. You can change the shape a little bit. Since we've got the pink already, I'm gonna roll just a little bit more and give her a little tie for her hair because she is so beautiful. I'm just gonna give her a little bit more color. Color is fun. That's one of the fun things with Palmer Clay. So I'm just gonna wrap that around the top of her bun so that she has a little color. And that's all I'm gonna do. You can come up with cute things to add and make it your own, your very, very own. But that is my tooth fairy. I hope that you had a great time making a polymer clay tooth fairy with me. Here is what we did together today. I even went back and added a little nose. I can't wait to see what you did. So please leave a comment, send me a picture of the one that you made. You can send it to me on Instagram or to my email. And I am so excited to see what you made. Again, my name is Lisa Ingram. Thank you for coming. I'm so proud of you for sticking with it and creating your own tooth fairy. Um, drop a comment, like, and subscribe, and let me know what you would like to make next time. Bye!